Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go ahead and take a look at our bell work today. So we're going to lean a 15-foot ladder up against a building at a point 10 feet above the ground. How far is the base of the ladder from the building? We'll draw, a label, a picture. We'll add a variable to our picture, and then we'll write an equation and solve. So how far is the base of the ladder from the building? So here we go. We'll suppose that this ladder is 15 feet long. We could label that then as a constant. That ladder length is not changing. It's touching the building at a point 10 feet above the ground. So we can label this vertical distance 10 feet. And now we'll go ahead and add a variable to our picture to determine how far the base of the ladder the base of the ladder is from the building. So we'll go ahead and put our x down here. What relationship, right? What famous equation relates the side lengths in any right triangle? What famous equation does that? Jacob? The Pythagorean theorem, good. And where a squared plus b squared equals c squared, so long as a and b are the leg lengths, and c is the hypotenuse length in a right triangle. In this case, I could let a be my unknown x length squared, plus b would be the 10 or the 15. Well, it would have to be the 10. Good. The other leg length. So 10 squared equals 15 squared. We can go ahead and solve for my unknown simply by evaluating 10 squared as 100. 15 squared is at 225. 225. Subtracting over my 100 to get x squared, the quadratic, along on one side, yields x squared equals 125. And we know we can undo square ring by square rooting. So x squared equals blah. The next is given by the positive and negative square root of blah. It's just that x represents a side length. So I'm not going to have a negative side length. So we can purposely strike out that negative side length. We know that x is going to be given by positive root 125. If we utilize our skills from first semester, right, back, back a blast from the past in unit 4 when we dealt with radicals, we could break up this 125 inside as a product of perfect squares, right, where one of my factors is a perfect square, the largest perfect square factor that divides evenly into 125 is 25 times 5. Also that I can simplify this radical exactly. I know that 25 inside of a square root is equivalent to a 5 out front. So I get 5 root 5 for my final answer. We can get a decimal approximation for that in my graphing calculator by taking my original square root of 125, and it's fine if you do this originally. Or after the fact, to check and make sure that we've simplified correctly, either is OK, and I get 11.180 about. And so my exact answer would be the square root of 125, right, or 5 root 5. My approximation would be about 11.180. And we want to make sure we're including units. Anytime we're dealing with a real life situation or a quantity, we need to include units. And so go ahead and think, what will I label this and tell the class of my calling you? That's about 11.10, I'm sorry, 180 what, right? Maya? Inches. So is this inches for my ladder? Oh, feet. Was it? It was feet? So 15, yep, so feet, absolutely, good job. So we'll say about 11.180 feet. Thank you, perfect. At this time, I ask that you raise your hand if you already had that. So who already had that? You guys are rock style to the top. Way to go. We don't need we don't need to pass anything in because I've already individually conferenced you with you to check your reading questions. So we're going to go with that. Let's go ahead and take a look at our objectives for the day. So today we're going to use trigonometric ratios in order to find missing side lengths and missing angle measures inside of right triangles. The good news is that you've investigated this before, right, in geometry with right triangle trigonometry, so there's going to be some common things. Next class, we're going to look at some brand new things called law of sines and law of cosines, which will enable us to find missing sides and angles when we're not dealing with right triangles. And so we've got some exciting things to look forward to. Let's go ahead and get started. Our unit on trigonometry has all kinds of cool things like, right, how high up on the on the building can we reach if our maximum boon extension includes an angle of elevation of 63 degrees and our ladder height max extension is 101 feet? 
how are we going to determine, right, how are we going to determine our angle of depression as we're trying to bring our plane down the runway for a safe landing? How do we determine the length, right, across this body of water if we can't navigate it? And all these kinds of things we can use trigonometry, and so that's pretty cool. How you guys like the clip art? Oh yeah, about two, two and a half hours. Fun stuff. All right, so what kind of lingo are we having today? We're going to be dealing with reference angle, right angle, opposite side, hypotenuse side, adjacent side, all these things should be familiar. And lastly, our trigonometric ratios. So katoa for sine, cosine, and tangent. So give me the little nod of the head that only I can see. You remember seeing sine, cosine, and tangent. It might have been a while, but you remember seeing it. That's awesome. Today we're going to refresh your memory. So I want you to know that our right angle, our right angle in a right triangle measures 90 degrees. And so it's easy to spot our right angle measures 90 degrees. And that will be our point of reference for determining our lengths and our hypotenuse. We know our reference angle is the angle that's being referred to. So we've got a different situation. If B is my reference angle, right, if B is my reference angle, then my opposite and adjacent side are going to be different than if A is my reference angle. And so if B were my reference angle, right, I'm going to be referring to B when I go ahead and figure out what side length is opposite B, what side length is adjacent B. That will be different than if my reference angle were angle A. If my reference angle were angle A, now I'm going to have different opposite side lengths and different adjacent side lengths because I'm referring, my point of reference is a different spot. So we're going to practice that a little bit later. The side directly across from the reference angle is the opposite side. So let's go ahead and practice with that. If my reference angle is A, everybody look. Opposite angle A would be over here across the triangle. And so opposite angle A would be side length BC. So if my reference angle is A, the opposite side I go across, right? I go across the triangle and I get to the opposite side by going across the triangle. That's very different than if my reference angle had been B. If my reference angle is B, across the triangle to the opposite side length would be now down here at AC. So AC would be the side length opposite angle B. Awesome. So my right angle is always opposite the hypotenuse. And so we don't have a choice for the placement of the hypotenuse. It's always the longest side in the right angle. It's always opposite the right angle, and you guys know that. The adjacent side length, right, the adjacent side length is the side length touching my angle of reference, but not the hypotenuse. And so if B were my reference angle, everybody look. For sure, right, for sure, my hypotenuse is the longest side. That's the side length opposite the right angle. The adjacent side length is the side that's touching my reference angle, but not the hypotenuse. So where would I have to put this? I have to put it right here. Touching the reference angle, but not the hypotenuse. That's the reference angle. Right? That's different than if A were my reference angle. Now the side length that's touching A, my reference angle, but not the hypotenuse, wouldn't be BC. It would be AC, right? Adjacent, adjoining, adjacent, next to. So touching my reference angle, but not the hypotenuse. Everybody see? All right. In just a minute, all right, you're going to have an opportunity to come down and you're going to drag, you're going to drag the side length title into the appropriate box based on my reference angle, and you're going to have a lot of chances to practice. And so, <coughs> excuse me, when I call your name, I want you to come down and you're going to take the back of your fingernail, right, and you're going to drag the side length label into the appropriate box. I'm going to do one to show you how it works. So here we go. Let's go ahead and practice by placing the vocabulary words on the appropriate side of the triangle. Here we go. Everybody look, please. B is my reference angle. So I can go ahead and fill in my side length labels in the appropriate box. I'm going to go ahead and take my fingernail and I'm going to drag across. So hypotenuse, I know, oh, that's always the longest side of the right triangle. I'm going to drag it into the box and watch what happens. It'll turn green and I'll let go. If it's not right, then it'll, it'll spit it back out or say try again. Now I'm going to go ahead and fill in the opposite side. So I'll go ahead and grab my opposite side with my fingernail and I'll pull it. Opposite the reference angle is going to be, no way, Jose. Opposite would be across the triangle. Good job. I got a good job. Hey, that's nice. Things are looking up today. How many again? I got a good job. And now we'll go adjacent is adjoining. It's next to, but not the hypotenuse. So 
Here I go, let go in. Hey, three good jobs. Nice. I'm going to cruise this right into the weekend feeling good about myself. All right, so now it's your turn to come on down. Don't be shy. You're going to go ahead and take the, your fingernail and you're going to drag it into the right spot. Okay, so to kick off our party is going to be Jacques. If you'd come on first, go ahead and drag the appropriate one. And then you can choose a classmate and advance the slides. So we're all watching you with close scrutiny, right? We're poised with our rotten fruit and tomatoes. Yes, and we're ready to throw the produce at you if you're incorrect. No, I'm just kidding. We never <laughs> throw the rotten produce at you. We wait. We're going to place that on your seat when you return back to your desk and then just sit on it. Well. Go ahead and advance the slide and pick a classmate. Okay. Thanks. Last one. Thank you very much, Samantha. I appreciate it. Way to go. Hey, go ahead. Thank you, Kevin. Right we start? Yeah. Thanks to all of you guys who came down and shared. I knew we get a lot of chances to practice. I haven't had that much fun since my car broke down outside of Ho Chunk. I gambled away all my uh, uh, gas money on the roulette table. But in any case, don't work. don't let that happen to you, okay? So be careful. See, keep it on the straight. All right, let's go ahead and add some common vocabulary. And so at this time, we'll switch gears to our, our green note sheet. And let's go ahead and practice with our location of slides. Thanks to those of you who came down and sharing your responses. I appreciate that. So here we go. In this particular triangle, right, AB must be the hypotenuse because it's across from the right angle. If A is my reference angle, if A is my reference angle, then let's go ahead and think about which is the side opposite, right? Which is the side opposite. So go ahead and tell me with letters, which side is opposite angle A? Go ahead and tell me with letters. Joe? BC. BC, absolutely. And because of the segment, we could go ahead and fill that in with 
a line segment symbol on top. Go ahead and tell the class the side adjacent, the side adjacent A with letters. What would that look like with letters? Andrew? AC. AC. AC is adjacent angle A, that is adjoining. It's touching, but it's not the hypotenuse. Good. And I believe I wrote that in with a little line tool too. There we go. So BC is opposite angle A. And AC is adjacent angle A. Now let's switch gears. Pretend that B were my reference angle. If B is my reference angle, now, right, my hypotenuse is unchanged. However, my opposite side length is what letters? Go ahead and tell the class. Nathan? AC is opposite angle B. Good job. Thank you. And what side is adjacent angle B? Adjacent angle B. Ian? BC is adjacent angle B. It's adjoining. It's touching, but it's not the hypotenuse. Good job. Thank you. And I think I put those with little lines, too. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. There's my little line segment. Symbol. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and add our right triangle trig ratios. Sine, cosine, and tangent. Above all, I want you to think of these sine, cosine, and tangent right, values as ratios, as fractions. They're a ratio of side lengths. Sine of an angle is the ratio of the side length that's opposite to the side length of the hypotenuse. And so we're going to get our sine ratio here, our cosine ratio, our tangent ratio, and that'll help us solve for missing side length. So the side length is the ratio of the opposite side length to the hypotenuse side length. We use oftentimes theta to represent an unknown angle measure or an angle. And so this symbol right here is the Greek letter theta. Say hello to my little friend, theta. Right, I'd like to introduce you to theta. And that's just a, a Greek letter oftentimes used for an unknown angle or a particular angle. And I would encourage you, it might be unfamiliar for now, but don't be a theta hater, okay? Don't be a theta hater. We're going to see lots more theta throughout unit eight. Cosine of theta is the ratio of the adjacent side length to the hypotenuse side length. And so cosine of theta is given by the length of the adjacent side over the hypotenuse length. And these will still be here. I'm going to advance one more so we can get the last one. The tangent of an angle is given by the length of the opposite side over the length of the adjacent side. So in short, right, to remember the sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, right? The length of the opposite side over the length of hypotenuse. The cosine of an angle is given by the ratio of adjacent over hypotenuse. And lastly, the tangent of an angle theta is given by opposite over adjacent. We can help remember that by using our little phrase, so ga toa, from Geometry. So long as we remember how to spell so ka toa, then we'll remember these side length ratios. Okay, so I'll give you a minute to finish that up. Awesome. So here's our so ka toa. What? So, right, S for sine, and then that's opposite side length over hypotenuse side length. So sine is the ratio of opposite over hypotenuse. Guess what cosine is? Yes, that's right. Our cosine, our cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And so adjacent over hypotenuse, that's how I remember that. And then T for tangent, right? T for tangent. So ka toa, and then opposite over adjacent. So so ka toa, and that can be a memory aid 
for our trigonometric ratio. So our phrase used to remember could be so ka soa, so long as we remember that so is spelled S-O-H, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine, ka. Cosine is adjacent side length over hypotenuse side length, that ratio. And toa, where O is opposite over adjacent, so tangent is opposite over adjacent. We're going to use that in just a minute to find some missing side length and missing angle measures in right triangles. First, though, let's think about why the sine, cosine, and tangent values for any acute angle are always the same regardless of the size triangle. And the reason for that is that these triangles, right, if they have a, if they have a sine of a given angle, an acute angle that's the same, Sine is a ratio of side lengths, therefore the ratio of the opposite over hypotenuse is going to be the same regardless of the size of the triangle due to our angle-angle similarity theorem back from geometry. We know that if two angles in my triangle are the same, in this case the green acute, green acute is the right angle, guess what? The third angle has to be the same, guaranteeing these triangles are similar. If they're similar, they're exactly the, the same shape, just different size. And so there's some scale factor, call it K, that relates right, these side lengths. And so if this particular side length is A, then this particular side length is going to be some scale factor times side length A. If this side length is B, right, I'm going to use that for the, for the leg, then K times B would be the corresponding side length in my similar larger triangle. And lastly, you guessed it, if I had side length C for my hypotenuse in the little triangle, then what would be the side length, the side length in this larger triangle? Rachel? K times C, right? Undercover. Undercover. In burrito. In burrito? What are you talking about? Oh no, that's code. That's code for in burrito. Like in the garbage can. Mm -hmm. Casey undercover. Great show. We do you all right. Oh yeah, holiday. Great day. So what's up with our sine ratio? Well, the sine of a given angle here, right, the sine of this given angle A is opposite over hypotenuse. And so for this first triangle, the sine of angle A, that is the worst sign I've ever written in my life. is given by opposite over hypotenuse would be A over C. In the second triangle, the sine of angle A would be given by the ratio of opposite side length over hypotenuse side length. That would be KA over KC. And I can reduce that scale, right, factor K, and what would I get? I get exactly A over C. And so because of similar triangles, the, the scale factor that relates to side lengths, they would cancel out when I simplified the ratio. Awesome. Can we find some missing side lengths and missing angles? I sure hope so. So let's go ahead and take a look at our examples now. We've got six examples. You've got all six on a single side. I went ahead and did two, two, and two. So to have some room. Depending upon our unknown, right, we'll use a different, a different series of inverse operations to solve for it. So it looks to me like in number one, we're looking for a missing side length. So we'll start with which trig ratio, sine, cosine, or tangent, involves my known angle, my known side, and my unknown side. So let's everybody go to my known angle. My known acute angle is 63 degrees. In relation to 63 degrees, is x opposite? adjacent or hypotenuse. And so x is opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse in terms of 63 degrees. Where is that x? Mark? Opposite. Opposite. Good. The 101 looks like it's the hypotenuse because it's my longest side across from the right angle. Therefore, I would use the trig ratio that relates opposite and hypotenuse. What trig ratio relates opposite and hypotenuse? That's my sine ratio. So sine of an angle equals a fraction, it's opposite over hypotenuse. Let's everybody write an equation then that we could use to solve for x. Ready? Sine of an angle equals a ratio. 
in this case, sine of 63 equals opposite over hypotenuse. What's opposite 63? X. What's the hypotenuse in this triangle? 101. So my equation, 101 feet I should say, that I could use to solve for X in this case is treat function of an angle equals a fraction, sine of 63 degrees equals X over 101. Depending upon where X is, you'll use different inverse operations. In this case, it looks like I can simply solve for X in one step. If I multiply both sides by 101, I'll get X alone. It looks like X is going to equal 101 times sine of 63 degrees. That's exact. We'll go ahead and get an approximation, but we're going to do so with our calculator. So in order to do that, we need to check our mode. Everybody, first things first, go to the mode on your calculator. We need to make sure we're in degree mode if we're given angle information in degrees. Because of the degree symbol in our picture, I need to purposely change my mode to degree. Everybody go mode, down arrow, and highlight degree, and press enter if it's not already done so. The default is radian mode. And so you need to change this purposely if you haven't done it already. Everybody got it? Degree mode? Degree mode? Now my second quit in home screen, I'm all ready to go 101 times sine of 63, close angle input. Voila! It looks like I get about 90. It looks like about 90 feet. And so I'm getting 89.9916. So I'm getting about 90 feet. Awesome. Let's go ahead and do another. Number two. Everybody find our known acute angle. In this case, 15 degrees. Is my unknown side length Q opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse? Go ahead and tell the class when I call you. So is that Q side length opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse, given that our reference angle is 15 degrees? Blake? Adjacent. Adjacent. Good. Is 3,500 meters opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse? Carson? Opposite. Opposite. Good. What trig ratio, sine, cosine, or tangent, relates opposite and adjacent? So what's opposite and adjacent? Hans? Uh, tangent. tangent. Great. Thank you. Everybody, our equation will involve tangent. Remember, trig function of an angle equals a fraction. In this case, my acute angle is 15 degrees, and my fraction is for tangent, the ratio of opposite over adjacent. So opposite 15 degrees is 3,500. Adjacent 15 degrees is Q. So I've got my equation, now I can use a solve for my unknown. Depending upon where my unknown is, I'll use a different series of inverse operations. It looks like my variable Q is down in the basement. It's in the bottom of a fraction. So to get that out of the basement, I'm going to purposely multiply both sides by Q, the denominator that contains my variable expression. That'll get it out of the basement. I'll then get Q times tangent of 15 degrees equals 3,500. And now I can finish it up by division. I'll purposely divide both sides by tangent of 15 degrees to get Q alone. It looks like Q is given by exactly 3,500 meters divided by tangent of 15 degrees. And I'll get a, an approximation for that in just a minute. So on my drafting calculator, I'll go ahead and do 3,500 divided by the tangent of 15 degrees, close angle input. Voila! It looks like we get about 13,062.18 meters. What's that? It does? Let's take a look at my angle. So this is 3,500 meters, which is 3,000, 3,000 meters. This is 15 degrees, and this we're getting is about 13,000. Let's see if that makes sense. So if, right, if 13,000 meters is correct, then when I do 
opposite over adjacent, 35,000 divided by that answer, 3,500 rather, divided by that answer, and get the decimal for that, that should be the same as what? It should be the same as the tangent of 15. So let's check and see if that's the case. So what's the tangent of 15? 0.2679, so it does work. Another way to do it would be to figure out that third side. How can I figure out the third side? I could do Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So that third side length would be given me by the square root of 13,062.1773 squared plus 3,500 squared. Enter. And that's 13,522. And if I did 3,500 over second answer, that would be opposite over hypotenuse. I get about 2.258. So the sine opposite over hypotenuse of 15, my original, should give me the same thing if I did it right. And it does. And so we checked twice. We're good. Awesome. Let's box that bad boy. What question do you have about our first two? Now let's take a look at another. In relation to 50 degrees, which side lengths are x and 1.9? Go ahead and tell your partner which trig function, sine, cosine, or tangent I'll use for number three's equation. Which trig function relates 50 degrees, 1.9 kilometers, and x? Get ready to share with the whole class. What are we going to use for this one? Taylor and Jarrett? Cosine. Cosine. Raise your hand if you have the same as Taylor and Jarrett. Cosine? Good. Thanks again. down. Cosine of an angle equals a fraction. Cosine of an angle equals a fraction. In this case, my acute angle is 50 degrees. My fraction is the ratio. The ratio of adjacent side length over hypotenuse side length. Adjacent to 50 degrees but not the hypotenuse is... 1.9 kilometers. The hypotenuse is x kilometers. Depending upon where my variable is, I'll use different inverse operations. operation. It looks to me like I can get that unknown quantity x out of the basement by multiplying both sides by my variable expression. That'll get it out of the denominator on a level playing field x cosine 50 equals 1.9. Finish it out by division. You can divide both sides by Cosine of 50 degrees. And that gets x alone. So x equals exactly 1.9 divided by cosine of 50 degrees. And I'll get an approximation for that. Divided by, co oh, Jiminy Cricket. Cosine of 50 degrees. Close angle and flips. Uh oh. Bad news bears. Like, I'm getting about 2.956, about 2.956. Does that seem reasonable? Well, this was 1.9, and my hypotenuse is the longest side, so it should be longer than 1.9, and that is longer, so that's a quick check. Awesome. Let's take a look at four, write an equation, be ready to share with the class. So write an equation for number four, be ready to share with the class. Think about what's your unknown angle, what's your side length, what function relates them. Okay, so what trig function are we going to use in this case? And what trig function are we going to use in this case? Megan? Oh, uh, I use sine. You use sine? 
sine of angle equals a fraction. Sine of angle equals a fraction. Raise your hand if you had the sine function. Who picked the sine function? Good. What's my angle going to be? Chrissy? What's that? It's be X. Absolutely. That's my unknown. My unknown is the angle. What would my fraction be? Remember, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So what will what will my fraction be? Jacques? It will be 90 over 1. Good job. So what's different about my equation number four than the first three? Right? What's different about this equation? Will? Um, you have two lengths. We have two lengths, right? And we're looking for an unknown what? An unknown angle. In the previous three, we were looking for unknown sides. Thank you. Now we're looking for an unknown angle. So how is it that we find an unknown angle? Well, that's where we get to undo. We get to undo a trig function with an inverse trig function. Just like we undo operations with inverse operations, we're going to undo sine by taking the inverse sine of both sides. That is an operation. So we're going to undo... Oops, there's a dog. Okay, that land. You might need it later. We're going to undo sine by taking the inverse sine of both sides. Okay, we're going to take the inverse sine of both sides. On the left-hand side, we're taking the inverse sine of sine of x. On the right hand side, we're taking the inverse sine of 90 over 101. The inverse function, right, undoes the original function. What's the inverse sine of sine? Well, it's whatever was in my original input. So, the inverse sine of sine of x is just x. That's why we took the inverse sine. We wanted to get x alone and solve. So, an inverse function undoes the original function and gets at that input. The inverse sine of 90 over 100 is my exact answer. I don't know what that is, so I'm going to go to my calculator and get a decimal approximation. But where do I find my inverse sine button? <clears throat> well, I'm scanning, I'm scanning, and yes, that's right, the shift key. Second sine gives me inverse sine. Everybody, x equals the inverse sine of, so do second sine is inverse sine of the ratio 90 over 101. <coughs> close angle input, or close input, and I get about 63 degrees. And so I'm getting about 63 degrees. That's pretty sweet, you know. So what's different about finding an unknown angle? I get to use the inverse trig buttons instead of the straight up trig buttons, sine, cosine, tangent. I do shift. Right? I do second sine to get inverse sine. Second tangent to get inverse tangent. If I'm trying to find a missing angle, I get to use the inverse trig function. All right. Go ahead and write your equation for number five. We're going to share with the class. What equation will you use for number five? Be ready to share the class. Pick your trig function. Write your angle, write your fraction. All right, what equation do you have for number five? Go ahead and share with the class when I call on you. Megan S. Um, 10x plus 3 over 13,062. Raise your hand if you have the same equation as Megan. Tangent of x equals 3,500 over 13,062. Way to go, you guys. What undoes tangent to solve for x? What am I going to do to undo tangent? Hannah? Yeah, the inverse tangent function. The inverse tangent function will undo tangent and solve for x. Absolutely. So if tangent of x equals blah, then x equals the inverse tangent of blah. I'm going to purposely take the inverse tangent of both sides. Nice job. What's 
the inverse tangent of tangent of x? That's x. That's why we took the inverse tangent, because it undoes the regular tangent function and gets that unknown x alone. What's the inverse tangent of 3,500 over 13,062? I don't know. I'm going to go to the calculator and get a decimal approximation and see. We're going to figure out what that missing angle is. So to the graphers, inverse tangent is second tangent, second tangent is 3,500 divided by 4, 13,062, close input, about 15 degrees, nice. Awesome. And one to go on this first example sheet. Go ahead and write down an equation. Be ready to share with the class. Tree function relates angle and side lengths. Get ready to share. So what equation will we use this time? Carson? Tangent, raise your hand if you use tangent function. Tangent function, good job. Tangent of an angle equals a fraction. In this case, my angle is x, my unknown. My fraction is opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite is 1.9. I'm sorry, opposite over adjacent, rather. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Adjacent is 2.3. And I can again solve by taking the inverse tangent. So if tangent of x equals blah, then x is given by the inverse tangent of blah. In this case, blah was 1.9 over 2.3. Don't know what that is, so we'll go to the calculator. Inverse tangent of 1.9 over 2.3. Raise your hand if you add 39.56 degrees, 39.56 degrees. Way to go, you guys are doing great. Awesome work. Cool. And this is going to bug me for the rest of the day. Sorry, 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 sorry. Remember, we strive for PDFable in this class, right? PDFable, Colin, baby. PDFable. Great. All right, let's go ahead and add a couple more key terms. We'll do one application problem, and then you guys will have a chance to get started on your assignment number one. So let's go ahead and take a look at some special angles. If you could go back to your green note sheet, please. The angle of elevation refers to the angle formed by the horizontal and the line of sight up to an object. And so the angle of elevation is the measure of the angle in between the horizontal and then up to the line of sight to an object. that person at point E, right, would have to look up to the top of the Leaning Tower of Pisa, right? That angle in between the horizontal and up to his line of sight to the top of the object, that's the angle of elevation. Contrast that with the angle of depression. Still measured from the horizontal, but the angle of depression is the measure of the angle in between the horizontal and down to an object. So in between the angle, the horizontal, and the line of sight down to an object. So our angle of elevation is right here in between the horizontal and up to an object. Our angle of depression is right here in between the horizontal and down to, down to an object. That's the difference between elevation versus angle of depression.
Now we'll go ahead and use those definitions in order to solve, right, solve some application problems. So let's think about this next situation and see if we can't figure out a missing side length or angle based on the description. While on watch one evening, a lighthouse keeper observes a ship off in the distance. Her angle of depression to see the ship is about 5 degrees. Her height above the level ocean is 80 feet. How far in the distance is the ship from the base of the lighthouse? So let's go ahead and see if we can translate that given information into a picture. Label, right, with appropriate side lengths, angles, variables, and then write an equation just like our note form 1 through 6 and see if we can't figure out our unknown. So while on watch, a lighthouse keeper observes a ship off in the distance. Her angle of depression to see the ship is about 5 degrees. Her height above the level ocean is 80 feet. How far in the distance is the ship from the base of the lighthouse? I'm going to go ahead and get some line segments in here. So it looks to me like we've got our ship and our base of the lighthouse. I'll go ahead and say here in the middle. And let me move this down to the, there we go, the level ocean. Uh, we've also got this height of the lighthouse. And we've got our line of sight. Together, these form a right triangle. So I'll go ahead and label that with the right angle symbol. Everybody got a right triangle involved? Next, we need to label some given information. And so her angle of depression to see the ship is about five degrees. So remember, angle of depression is always measured from the horizontal. I'm going to go ahead and put in the horizontal here. The angle of depression is always measured from the horizontal and then down to the line of sight to an object. So this 5 must be right here. So there's our 5 degrees. Next, her height above the level ocean is 80 feet. So where can I put that 80 feet? Joe? The lighthouse. I'm down, so we'll put 80 feet here. And where can I put my unknown, right? What is it that we're trying to figure out in this problem? What is it that we're looking for? Hans? Um, the distance between the lights. Awesome. So let's label that our unknown variable. I'll go ahead and call that x. So our x is now down here in green. Great. So what trig function relates our angle 5 degrees, our height 80 degrees, and our unknown side length x? I'm sorry, 80 feet. And our side length x? Well, nothing right now because that 5 degrees is not a reference angle in my right triangle. That's okay. We can get that 5 degrees. We can use that 5 degrees to get an angle in my triangle, right? We could fill in a couple different triangle angle measures. Please pardon the interruption for a few announcements regarding today's uh, after school schedule and cancellation. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, what can we use that 5 degrees that's currently outside of my triangle? How can I use that information to get inside my triangle? So, what's something we could do to get some angle measures inside it? Right? How can we get angle measures inside it? Uh, Ian and Rachel? Absolutely. That would give us an angle measure inside. Rachel recognizes that this angle inside my triangle and 5 degrees are complementary. They sum to 90 degrees. Therefore, 90 degrees minus 5 gives us this blue angle inside my triangle, and that would be 85 degrees. Absolutely. So we could certainly do it that way. If we did it that way, we could now write a trig function involving 85 degrees, my unknown side length x, and my vertical, my vertical length 80 feet. What trig function would it be? In relation to 85 degrees, I've got opposite and I've got adjacent. What trig function relates opposite and adjacent? And what trig function relates opposite and adjacent? Chrissy? Tangent. Tangent. Awesome. Let's do it. So we'll write our equation. Tangent of 85 degrees 
equals opposite x over adjacent 80 and finish it out by solving. Way to go, you guys. Strong work. So we'll go ahead and multiply over to solve for x exactly. And I get x equals exactly 80 times the tangent of 85 degrees. However, I don't know, right? I don't know what that is. So I'm going to get a decimal approximation of my graph. So I'll go to the calculator and I'll say 80 times tangent of 85 degrees close angle. Voila! It looks like 914.4 feet away. And again, that seems long, but think about the size of my angle here. So she's not looking down very much. She's only looking down 5 degrees. And so it makes sense that this is going to be a much larger measure than the 80 feet. Right? Awesome. What questions do you have about our angle of depression problem? And let's go ahead and finish it up with our closure today. Okay, so for our closure today, I want a written response from everybody. Don't say it out loud, and I'll call on you to share with the class. What trig ratio would I use when working with adjacent and hypotenuse lengths? What trig ratio would I use when working with adjacent and opposite lengths? How do we get an unknown out of the bottom of, of a fraction, excuse me, in order to solve? And lastly, when do we use inverse trig functions? Go ahead and run a written response and be ready to share. I'm going to call on you in just a minute. Okay, go ahead and share with the whole class when I call on you. Please be ready. Number one, what trig ratio would I use when working with adjacent and hypotenuse lengths? Adjacent and hypotenuse lengths. Taylor? Cosine. Cosine. Raise your hand again, the same as Taylor. Cosine. Cosine. Good job. Thanks, hands down. What trig ratio would I use when working with the adjacent and opposite lengths? Chloe? Tangent. Tangent. Raise your hand again, the same as Chloe. Tangent. Tangent. Good job, thanks, hands down. How do we get an unknown quantity out of the bottom of a fraction in order to solve? So how do we get that unknown out of the bottom of a fraction? Samantha? Oh, Absolutely. Multiply both sides by the unknown. Good job. So we'll multiply both sides by that variable expression. that variable expression. Perfect. And lastly, how, when do we use inverse trig functions? And so when was it that we used those inverse trig functions? Well, to find angles. Absolutely. To find unknown angle measures, right? So when we wanted to find unknown angle measures, that's when we use the inverse trig functions. You guys did great today. So we've got our assignment that's on your purple sheet, assignment number one. Don't forget your reading questions. I'm going to go ahead and save the recording and upload it to Moodle. Thanks for getting going right away and using this time for advanced algebra.